as you can clearly see, this is a split ring and not a slip ring. So the answer to 9.1.1, we have split, split ring, okay? A is a split ring and not slip, okay? 9.1.2, save the energy conversion that takes place in the motor. So for every motor, we have electrical energy to mechanical energy, right? We have a power source here that is providing us with electrical energy. And we convert that electrical to mechanical. That's what you were supposed to write. Electrical to mechanical, right? There's no other possible solution here. We have electrical energy to mechanical energy. I do see electrical to kinetic energy once in a while, but for the most part, electrical energy to mechanical energy, okay? 9.1.3, in which direction will the coil rotate? Choose from clockwise or anti-clockwise, okay? Well, explaining this will be very difficult because you cannot see my hand, obviously. This is a motor. With a motor, we use the left hand, okay? So your index finger will point from north to south. Your middle finger is the direction of the current. And your thumb is the force or the rotation of the coil, okay? If you place your left hand on that part of the coil, and then with your index pointing from north to south, and with your middle finger showing the direction of the current, then your thumb is going to show you the direction of the coil at that part, okay? So we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. So the current is going to be flowing in this fashion, okay? As you can clearly see, on the part we're interested in, the current is going down. So you're supposed to twist your hand such that your index is pointing from north to south and then your middle finger is flowing the current. If you do that, then this part is going to be going down, right? And if that part is going down, you can clearly see that uh, we have a clockwise rotation. That is the answer to 9.1.3. It is unfortunate. I cannot demonstrate it. Yeah, as you cannot see my hand. But practice that and wrap your head around it. 9.1.4. So 9.1.4. State two changes that can be made to the motor for the coil to rotate faster. Okay, I can increase the voltage. Increase the voltage. If you increase the voltage, the coil will go faster. So that's one of the things you can do. I want you guys to tell me what reasons you gave. I'm saying I'm going to increase the voltage. What did you say in the exam? Let me know in the comments. I'll be checking it out. Okay, that is 9.1.4. Let's take a look at 9.2. VRMS, IRMS, so on and so on. We know what you expect. Uh, the second diagram below shows an electric kettle and a toaster connected to an AC source with an RMS voltage of 220 volts. Okay. The ammeter connecting wires and switches S1 and S2 have negligible resistance. Right. 9.2.1 is supposed to define the term root mean square current. I'm going to leave that one for you. Let's do 9.2.2. 9.2.2, when switch S1 is closed and switch S2 is open, the maximum current, so I max, is equal to 3.6 ampere. Calculate the root mean square current in the circuit. Okay. So we're going to have IRMS being equal to IMAX divided by square root of 2. IMAX 3.6 divided by square root of 2. So what should we get? I'm getting 2.55 ampere as my answer to 9.2.2. 9.2.3, on the other hand, when switch S1 is open and switch S2 is closed, the root mean square current in the circuit is 2.62 ampere. So now we have IRMS, which is 2.62 ampere. 
calculate the energy consumed by the two star in two minutes. So we want the energy. The energy is equal to the power multiplied by the time. Okay. So the power can take different forms, right? We can have V I V squared divided by R, I squared multiplied by R. So let's decide on which formula we're gonna use to calculate the power. Well, we have I. I RMS is equal to 2.62. So now we need V or R in order to calculate the power. We have the VRMS. We are given the VRMS of the source. Okay. It is said to be 220. So we can just go ahead and find the power by saying VRMS multiplied by IRMS. Okay. Obviously, you can find the resistance first, which is sort of wasting your time because you don't have to do that. But if you do it, there is no problem. Okay. So we can find the power using that. And then the time we have two minutes, which is just 120 seconds. Okay. So the energy consumed will be equal to the power, which is 220, our VRMS. Uh, multiplied by the current, which is 2.62, multiplied by the time, which is 120. Okay, uh, I have the answer, but I have to put it in my calculator again and make sure. Okay, this is 69,168 joules. Okay, energy is in joules and not watts.